Bounties are just one of the many fun topics to discuss when it comes to One Piece. However, I do think conversations can become quite political as literally everyone has an opinion. I think it's a foregone conclusion that post Wano, the Straw Hats are all going to have a massive bump in bounty. And since this is the first time in a long time that they've all been together, they're literally all going to have a bump at the exact same time. I can literally see it now, the panel of the news crew delivering the newspaper to the Straw Hats as they all view their newfound bounties. So in this video, I'm going to give my thoughts as to what I believe the Straw Hats bounties will be and why. Now before I get started, make sure you leave a thumbs up to this video and subscribe to the channel if you would like to see more content like this. And now I've got the formalities out of the way, let's get into the video. So the first member I want to take a look at is Monkey D Luffy. Now Luffy being the captain of the crew clearly has the highest bounty, but his current bounty standing at a whopping 1.5 billion was almost gifted to him post Whole Cake Island. Actually I think the word gifted is a bit harsh as Luffy definitely is formidable and has achieved so much so the bounty is quite fitting of his efforts. But I guess what you all want to know is, what is his bounty going to be? And I think this is quite interesting because Luffy is still growing so I don't necessarily think he's going to have that Pirate King level jump. But then we have to take into consideration how much more of the story is left and how many more bounty increases there are likely to be. And if you ask me, I can see literally one or maybe two. I'm actually leaning more towards two now that I think about it. But basically, there's not many more increases. Not just for Luffy, but for all the Straw Hats. So when looking at Luffy's increase, I think we have to take into consideration what goes down in Wano and how that story unravels. We have to realise that both Big Mum and Kaido are in this Wano arc and the big question is whether both of these Yonko fall or not. And if it's just Kaido, as many of us suspect, I'm part of the few that believe that Luffy will be the one landing that final blow. So for this reason, I'm saying his bounty will most likely be around 3.5 billion berries. And it really took a lot of thinking for this one, but I think it's quite fitting because Luffy's bounty is definitely not going to be higher than Shanks. Well, just yet anyways. However, I do think it exceeds Blackbeard's bounty. And this leads back to the whole it's too soon moment with Blackbeard when Luffy was called the fifth emperor and got his last bounty increase post Whole Cake Island. I think a bounty of 3.5 billion will truly solidify Luffy as an emperor, meaning that Luffy would have become that great pirate that Shanks had challenged him to be and so they can finally meet. I also think Blackbeard will be making his moves in the background, so his bounty will be rising soon as well, but that's a whole different topic. Furthermore, I honestly think Luffy's bounty could be even higher, but I personally think that the astronomical increase will occur once Luffy has actually found the One Piece, so I'll stick to 3.5 billion for now. The next two straw hats I want to take a look at are Zoro and Sanji. And this is because I believe Oda does their bounties in tandem. Zoro has had three bounties so far. The first was at 60 million, then after beating Kaku of CP9, this then doubled to 120 million. And then after the events of Dressrosa, this almost tripled to 320 million. Now I was shocked at this, as I don't actually think Zoro did that much in Dressrosa, and I don't think Pika was actually any good. Now Sanji too has had three bounties. His first was for 77 million, then after Dressrosa was awarded his second at 177 million and then post Whole Cake Island was given his third of 330 million. Now the reason I chose to look at Zoro and Sanji together is because their bounties seem to mimic each other. I actually don't want to address the few Sanji haters who think that Sanji's bounties are actually half of Zoro's because actually they've both been given three bounties and therefore it is what it is. However, Zoro actually did have his bounty first, so was always ahead in the bounty game with Sanji playing catch up right until Whole Cake Island, where Zoro wasn't present in order to gain an increase in bounty and therefore Sanji's bounty is slightly higher. I actually believe this was premeditated by Oda as he knows the discussions that we're having in the community and that this would be a massive talking point, so he's done it intentionally. 
However, before I digress and make this a Sanji vs Zoro video, let's take a look at Wano. Now I believe prior to Wano that most of us predicted that Zoro would fight King and Sanji would fight Queen. However, with the events that have gone on so far, I'm not so sure about this as King has been shown to be the flying type and Queen has been shown to use weapons and so it just doesn't seem like these are the correct matchups. Now hear me out, I know a lot of you may not want to see this but I think this literally could be a 2 on 2 battle for some reason. If we track back to the beautiful double spread in One Piece chapter 989, there was a comment made by Sanji in regards to King and the flying types he was with and that to me suggests that he sees that as a task that he could actually deal with and there's actually two reasons for this. One, Sanji can actually skywalk and two, he has the raid suit which actually gives him the ability to fly which pretty much makes it a fair matchup for the two. And currently Zoro is with X Drake who has Queen on this case so if you ask me I reckon after this 2 on 2 fight Oda will probably give Zoro and Sanji equal bounties. Now if I'm following the pattern that Oda's previously gone down they should both be around the 1.3 billion mark however I think their bounty growth is going to be a little bit higher than this and they'll probably be around the 1.9 billion mark. And if Oda decides to continue the ongoing gag between the two even though I would hate to admit it I can see Zoro getting 2 billion and Sanji staying on 1.9 billion so let's see how this pans out. The next straw hat I think it's worth taking a look at is Nami. She's got the lowest bounty of the crew outside of Chopper sitting at a mere 66 million and I think it's hilarious because from the start she hasn't wanted a bounty but as they say it comes with the job. For me I think the main thing to note is that many in the One Piece verse don't see Nami as that strong as a fighter but we know that she can definitely handle herself and I think the main thing would be whether she can keep hold of Zeus or not as having that as a permanent power up would definitely cause a massive increase in her bounty. Now in the most recent chapter we saw of her we can assume that Nami and Usopp are going to have a 2 on 2 battle with Ulti and Page 1 so that suggests to me it would be safe to put her at what I assume the Toby Roper would be at therefore I think Nami will get a bounty of at least 300 million berries which is absolutely going to freak her out but as this is the level that the supernovas are at I would say this is where she lands and it's part of the job. Now as I mentioned Usopp I think it's only right to discuss his bounty next and I think with Usopp Oda goes down that troll route again just as he did in Dressrosa where he became god Usopp and got that 200 million berry bounty which at the time was massive for him. However this time around I'm not quite sure where his moment will come however I can see Usopp getting a bounty of around 700 million berries for doing something absolutely ridiculous and most likely will involve his hacky blooming at some point too. I personally think this works very well and puts him in the same category as, as the likes of Perispero who even though isn't a commander has a ridiculously high bounty. Next on the list is Frankie who I feel like hasn't been treated fairly. Frankie truly is a force to be reckoned with and he has been since we first met him. I think with all the talk of the ancient weapons and his link to Pluton, Frankie is going to become an even more important figure in the story and so definitely will get a massive bump on his 94 million berry bounty that he was so upset with after Dressrosa because unlike Nami, Frankie actually wants a high bounty. And was upset at the fact that it wasn't at least 100 million. I however think that although Frankie proved himself important this arc he may get trolled again and doesn't match up to Usopp's bounty and actually gets a bounty of about 500 million berries. And since I spoke about the ancient weapons what about Nico Robin? The girl who had a 79 million berry bounty at a young age of 6 and now only has a bounty of 190 million. I think post Wano, once she's read three of the four road poneglyphs, will be going into dangerous territory for the military. As far as we know, Robin is the only person we know that can read these things and so shouldn't she be high priority. So although we're probably going to go down the standard route and her ending up with a 500 million berry bounty, I think Robin should be at least 1 billion and therefore I'm going to stick to that 
and hope I'm proved right. Next on the list is the man with the best wanted poster and it's the Soul King Brook. Brook is actually a really good character and we've seen time and time again him being extremely competent and I literally loved him so much on Whole Cake Island and honestly I feel like he was the MVP of that arc as not only did he knock over the Mother Carmel photo but he used his soul powers when fighting Big Mum too. And just to build on this, I think Brooke's music and soul powers are going to come into use again here in Wano. I think his matchup is most likely going to be a poo, and we've already seen what a poo can do with his music. So using this bounty as a baseline, I think Brooke jumps up from 83 million to about 300 million, which puts him at a respectable level, and I don't think anyone could say that he doesn't deserve this. When it comes to Chopper, I think Oda continues to gag one last time and he continues to be the pet of the crew, just as he's done with Beppo for Law. And I think maybe Chopper gets to that 1000 berry mark this time, which is still going to annoy him, but his time will eventually come. Last but not least, we have our newest addition to the crew and that's Jinbei. Now this was one of the more difficult members of the crew for me to predict as Jinbei is an accomplished pirate. He actually has the second highest bounty of the crew, standing at 438 million berries, and this was given to him post Marineford. And so, I think Jinbei is going to get massive recognition for helping out at Whole Cake Island, and now Wano, and then being a member of the Straw Hats. It's definitely going to do wonders for his bounty. However, I do think Oda is going to use this next bounty increase to reconfigure the balance of the crew and establish Zoro and Sanji as the right and left hands of Luffy and therefore Jinbei's bounty most likely will be just under 1 billion at around 990 million which puts him around smoothie level which now that I say that out loud sounds quite disrespectful to Jinbei. However, I think since he's a veteran in the game, there's not much that's not known about him to the government and therefore he isn't an imminent threat to them. So I think that just about covers it. I know we're expecting at least another character to join the Straw Hats so I could talk about the bounty of some of those as well. So let me know if you'd like to see that down in the comments. As always, shout out to anyone who's made it this far in this video. Let me know if you agree or if you don't agree with my bounty predictions and make sure you leave a thumbs up on the video and subscribe to the channel so you can get regular One Piece content from myself, Mr. Premps on at least a weekly basis. Safe.